Tom is Lance. Yeah. Oh, nice to hear from you, Lance. Come on, man. Be cool. Be cool. I'm in the middle of something. What do you want? Nothing. Just to say, you know, look, Tommy. We can do this thing. You and me. No problem. You know what I mean. We're going to have to do it. Because otherwise, we're going to be dead, Lance. We're in too far now. But thanks for the call. Speak to you later. So that call right there just shows you how impatient Lance is. With Tommy's careful planning, they could easily take out Diaz, but um, Lance isn't thinking clearly right now. He's just trying to rush through it. Um, uh, Tommy's planning everything really professionally. But anyways, um, welcome back to my next part of Vice City, the Definitive Edition. Hope you guys are enjoying this. On this part, we'll do Avery Carrington's missions. So let's do it here for Iron. Come in and park yourself on the hide, son. Hell, my daddy used to say, never look a gift horse in the mouth. And by golly, he never did. Would you like a drop of the old Kentucky? No, thanks. A clean thinker. I like that. Now, the property business isn't all about highfalutin paper pushing. It's about dirt and the will to claim that dirt. You with me, son? Oh, yeah. Well, I need some tenacious bastard to let go of some dirt. And you look to me like the kind of guy to persuade him. Persuasion's my forte. Yeah, he'll be down at the country club, down on the golf course. They don't allow guns, so his bodyguards won't be packing lawgivers. Go beat eight tons of crap out of him. Here now, I got you a membership. And boy, you're gonna need more appropriate clothing. <laughs> Again with the clothing. Friend. I never had a friend with a weight before. So now this mission for Avery, um... You get a trophy in Vice City. I've already gotten it um, earlier, but you get a trophy in the Definitive Edition if you ha uh, actually kill the target with a golf club. And it's nice that they put in like specific trophies and missions, but one thing that's really annoying about the Definitive Edition is that it doesn't have a mission select feature. It should have that. So like when you beat the game, you should be able to select whatever mission you want and just replay it again because then you have to get that specific trophy during the mission or just restart the game, which can be a bit frustrating or load an old save. Is this me? Nice ass, baby. <laughs> so now this mission, um, uh, this mission, one of the earlier ones, this mission can can be really quick, or it can take a bit long, um, depending on how you do it at the beginning. But we'll see. You can get kind of lucky, or it can take you uh, a bit. Oh, had a little bit of an accident there. Okay. Now the thing is, you can jump over the um, uh, the fence there and go in with your guns, but you know that's kind of cheating in a way. I guess we're not gonna do that. The target is at the driving range, enjoying a game of golf. Make sure it's his last. Okay. Yeah, but a chainsaw is apparently okay, yeah. That was the thing, so they don't differentiate between melee weapons, so apparently bringing in a chainsaw on the golf course is okay, but, um, uh... Oh, man, uh... A little bit weird there. Okay. Let's get on over there to the target, then. That mission in the um, the Dr. Dre missions for GT Online actually reminded me of this mission. Oh, here we go. Who is this guy? Boys, deal with him. Get him. It's best to just go. get these guys um, out of the way first, just so you don't have to deal with them. Because the guy's gonna get into a golf cart either way, and he's gonna try to run away. So let's deal with the bodyguards. Oh wait, we still got one left. Ah. Okay, there we go. Okay, they're in golf carts too, but um, uh, we took out the majority of the bodyguards. Okay, now we gotta get this guy. You can try to push him in the water, but that's a little bit risky too, because you could get knocked in the water. Ah, gotta be careful with this here. I don't know what he's doing. He's like driving around in circles. Ah. Okay, there we go. We got him now.
Yeah, so that's basically gotta do is try to corner him from out of the golf cart. I like how his bodyguard just stopped chasing me the moment that I kill him. <laughs> bit, bit weird. It was like that in the original, too. Let's go do Avery's next mission, then. We go and retrieve all of our guns here. <laughs> kind of weird how you gotta leave the M60 out, too. Demolition man, oh man, I bet a lot of people are saying, oh no, not this mission. Now look here, son. I got a problem and I reckon you could help me with it. I'm no builder. No, I was thinking more of your demolition skills. Now this here, this is the development as planned, and this, this is the property that we're looking at. You're trying to say this new office block is kind of in the way. You catch on quick. Now, I'm gonna head out of town for a while, and if that office development would have faced sudden and insurmountable structural problems, then I... As a civil-minded individual, you feel obliged to step in and save the rejuvenation of an important area of the city. Where can I get more guys like you? So Avery Carrington wants this, um, this new office building out of the way. Um, he wants to build something there. And so, um, Tommy is gonna end up destroying it with RC helicopters. So here we go. You don't even need a car for this mission. You can just run down the street. Use the RC helicopter to transport the bombs to four demolition points in the building site. You must place one bomb at each target. You can place bombs in any order. So now, a lot of people hate this mission because people just don't like the RC missions in general, but I actually don't think this mission is that bad. I don't. Um, I know some people are going to severely disagree with me, and I understand that opinion, but I don't think this mission is really that hard. Like, I'm going to do this on my first attempt, guys, just so you can see it. But um, uh, I'll tell you, though, that this... If you if you made the argument to me that on mobile this, this sucks, okay, yeah, I would agree that on mobile this sucks. But on console, you know, when you get used to the controls, you know, maybe a keyboard and mouse would be a little difficult too, but, you know, especially on console, which most people play on, if you use a controller... You know, this is um, uh, not that bad. You know, you memorize the helicopter controls. You memorize, you know, what button it is to drop everything. It's not that bad. You know exactly where the um, uh, where to drop it. You're good. Okay, here we go. Now we go and get the second target. So now the one that you want to go for is the square, because when you see this, the, the purple square, that represents that it's on your level. So if it's on your level, it's a square. A lot of people, you know, in especially in like video games, a lot of people don't know what those symbols mean. Whenever you see a square, it means that it's on the level that you're on. So we're on the right level, it's on the second floor. If you see a triangle, it means that it's either b above or below you. If it's a triangle pointing downwards, it means it's going, you gotta go down. If it's a triangle pointed up, it means you gotta go up. A lot of people confuse that. So see, it's um, a yellow um, a square right there, because I'm on its level. Go and pick it up, two bombs left. We still have plenty of time here, 5 minutes and 45 seconds. I think we'll finish this before we even get to 4 minutes. Okay, here we go. We go up. I got another staircase here. And the square is over there. If if the squares don't appear, just fly a little bit lower, and it'll tell you where to go. Okay, one more bomb. You know, it's kind of bizarre how they you, you were supposed to do this mission with an RC vehicle. I mean, like I said, it's not, I don't think it's that hard, but it would have been just much more simple just to go in and just um, uh, and just to um, uh, uh, just to go in with force and just plant the bombs that way. But and maybe they're trying to make it look like an accident, but at the same time, is um, uh, you know, this wouldn't really work. You see an RC helicopter flying clearly, you know, dropping bombs. Construction workers are chasing at it. Security guards are shooting up. Plenty of witnesses. So um. Uh, yeah. Okay. 
final bomb. Okay, looks like we're not gonna make the four minute mark, but we'll be pretty close. Okay, one more level. Here we go. Final one. And we still got good time. We still got over three minutes left. There we go. See? Did it on my first attempt there. Okay, so this is going to be Avery, uh, Avery's final mission here right now. Tommy, this is Donald Love. Donald, this is Tommy Vercetti, the latest gunslinger to come to these parts. Oh. Now, Donald, you just shut up and listen, and you might learn something. Now, nothing brings down real estate prices quicker than a good old-fashioned gang war. Except maybe a disaster like a biblical plague or something, but that may be going too far in this case. You getting this down, you four-eyed prick? Now, recently a gang lord died. You disguise yourself and head on down and crash the funeral. Mix it up and then hightail it. You getting this down, Donald? Well, that ought to Guys, the notice how there's a bunch of huge on, pause there? And then we'll just sit back and watch the prices tumble. So, you guys notice how when Avery said that line, you guys notice how there was a big pause there? You're like, why isn't he talking? Um, the reason for that pause, and the Definitive Edition even does it as well, is um, uh, because Avery had more lines. You can look up his original lines in the thing, but he talks about the Haitian and the Cuban gangs. And so the Haitian and the Cuban gangs, um, they really don't like each other. And uh, there's base a war about to brew, and Tommy's gonna spark that war and start it. But um, they cut out that dialogue because there's a lot of controversy with what the characters had said. And so later versions of, of Vice City, um, they actually had removed that dialogue. But anyways, um, uh, Tommy, what he's going to be going here, um, going to do here, is he's dressing up as a Cuban gangster, and he's going to go and attack um, Haitian gang lords' um, a funeral. So the um, uh, one of the, the leaders of the Haitian gang died, and they don't know who did it. Um, uh, it was actually possibly the Cubans who had done it. But um, uh, Tommy is going to, yeah. So Tommy's disguised right now. Tommy's gonna go over there and convince them that it was them just by ambushing them. But at the same time, is um, this is one of the most evil things that Tommy Versetti has done, where he starts a gang war and then he profits from it as well and plays kind of both sides. Uh, but at the same time, uh, remember that the the Haitian gangsters ambushed a Cuban gang's drug deal with Diaz, so they've had problems going back even before this. Excellent, they spotted you. Okay. Man, I love the Kruger. Okay, still got some M60 ammo here. Wow, look at look at how easy that was with the M60, right? Ho ho. Wow, we created a big mess there, didn't we? <laughs> okay, let's get out of here now. So normally you could just chase down the, um, uh, whoa. Yeah, it caused a little bit of cops of all the explosions. You could normally chase down the, um, uh, the hearse, uh, and the, a coffin will actually fall out of it. But, um, if you keep the M60 like I did, you can just use the M60 just to blow up the, um, uh, blow up the hearse before it escapes. So there we go. That was Avery's final mission. He'll still appear in the storyline, but he has no more missions for us right now. Now let's um uh, let's go and do some of Colonel Cortez's missions.
Oh, okay, so this call is important now. Hey, Leo, I got some work for you. This ain't Leo. Hey, if Leo knows you got his phone, he's gonna kill you. Maybe Leo's already dead. Maybe I killed Leo and took his phone. Did you ever think of that, prick? You kill Leo? You must have big hornets. Wanna work for me? Come by my father's cafe in Little Havana, and we'll talk mano y mano. So there, we've unlocked Umberto's mission. So uh, remember, the guy that Tommy killed, his name was Leo Teal. He was a hitman, a gun for hire. Um, uh, that was, you know, his his legitimate job disguised. He was a chef, but in reality, he was that hired gun. And so Umberto tries to call him to give him work, but Leo's already dead. And so he, Umberto instead tells Tommy, why don't you come work for me? And this is exactly about the gang war that Tommy just started, which Umberto doesn't know that Tommy started that gang war. And additionally, that line that Avery Carrington says to um uh says when he tells Donald Love to write it down, he says nothing brings down prices like a good old-fashioned gang war. Donald Love says the exact same line 15 years later. And if you really think about it, what he says, as messed up as it is, it kind of does um uh is kind of true. Because if two gangs are fighting each other in a neighborhood and there's a lot of violence, that is gonna bring down property prices. Because not too many people are going to want to buy property in a neighborhood that's experiencing a gang war. And so now Avery Carrington is going to be able to purchase up the, the land really cheaply. Yes, was pleased. I would like to meet you again. Is that a good thing? Of course. Although I'm starting to think that Diaz was responsible for our unfortunate loss. What makes you say that? One does not wave accusations at a man like Diaz. I'm never thinking out loud, no matter. I have a proposal that you could profit. I don't have time to run more errands, Cortez. I would have thought a man with such dangerous dates would be hungry for opportunities. Please, Tommy, at least hear me out. Go on. I have a buyer for a piece of military hardware that is being taken through town. Pick it up for me. And once you get it, I want you to call me immediately. Then... So I'll tell you guys something about this mission. And um, make sure you get the handgun that's outside of um, uh, Colonel Cortez's... Um, uh, Colonel Cortez's yacht. I know it's not the best gun in the game, but you know it's a free gun that you can get right outside here, especially early on in the game. Now, um, this mission. Oh man, um, uh, this mission is. Um, uh, when I was a kid, I struggled with this mission so badly. I thought that this mission was so annoying. It was one of the worst missions in the game. But actually, there's actually a really easy way to complete this mission, even though it seems like it's really hard. There's a trick, which I'll show you guys the trick here. It works in the original, and it'll work in the definitive edition. So Colonel Cortez wants a piece of military hardware that's going through um, a town. He doesn't tell you what what type of hardware it is, but uh, you're gonna see it right here, right now. Now we're coming up on it. Here it is. That. The tank. And you're probably wondering, why the hell does Colonel Cortez want a tank? The reason that he wants a tank is because, like I said in my previous part, he's a dictator in a fictional Central American country. And, um, uh, and he wants that, that tank probably so he could copy the American design. I don't think the Rhino is even based on a real tank. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but, um... It's just, I think it's just a fictional tank that was designed for GTA. But anyways, when I was a kid, I got so pissed when I did this mission because you would have to, I fought through all the soldiers and I would die so many times and it was just annoying and just frustrating. Um, and also that barracks is actually one of the few early vehicles that can carry a lot of people. So as you can see, how many is there? There's like, what, four guys in the back and two guys in the front so it can carry six people. So it's one of those early GTA vehicles that can transport a lot of characters. But anyways... All you gotta do to complete this mission easy, just follow the convoy. That's all you have to do, and just wait until it stops in front of the donut shop. Best not to have any weapons out. Go get some donuts, soldier! Sir, yes, sir! Convoy, halt! So they stop to go get donuts, and they leave the door unlocked. Civilian, move away from the tank! There we go. And we got it like that. 
Boom. <laughs> so that's a really easy way to do the mission. Um, and the garage that Colonel Cortez has you deliver it to, it's not that far. Oh, it's right here. There we go, we just lose the wanted level by the time we get to the garage. Oh yeah, here we go. Save your Vera, mate. What the hell are you talking about? You know that wanker Diaz, the bugle master? He's got your boy Lugs. Word is, you might try to jump. You didn't jump high enough, if you know what I mean. Where did he take him? Ah! Oh, ah. oh, 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 so Kent Paul, because he pretty much knows everything that's going on in Vice City, and he's constantly, um, uh, trying to find out, which is really not good for- I, and th that's what surprises me a lot, is that nobody really ever goes after Kent Paul, because you'd think that some of these gangs, when he's constantly talking about what they're doing, you'd think that they would go after him, um, but surprisingly, he's safe. Um, so anyways, uh, when I was a kid, I actually had a really hard time trying to understand Kent Paul, um, <laughs> from America, so I just didn't understand, um, uh, his accent that well, I just had a little bit of a difficulty, but now that I'm older, I understand him perfectly. I understand what he was saying, but when I was a kid, I was a bit confused by that cutscene, what he was trying to say. Um, and when he says jump, um, uh, he basically means that Lance was trying to attack Diaz. When they say jumped, that means that somebody got attacked. Um, but anyways, um, Lance attacked one of Diaz's businesses, and so Lance got impatient. Remember that phone call that we had at the beginning? Lance got impatient, he got annoyed that Tommy wasn't doing anything yet. Tommy was planning on getting rid of Diaz, but with his careful planning, but Lance ruined all of that. So now Tommy's going on over to save Lance at the scrapyard, and so a lot of people actually hate this mission. A lot of people really don't like this mission either. I actually don't think this mission is that bad, um, but there's one part of the mission that's kind of annoying, which I'll explain in a little bit here. Okay, so what I like to do is I just ram right here. And um, in the original, I think there was actually two guys behind the car, but whatever. Um, now you just go through here. With the Kruger, this is going to be easy. Yeah, he's getting in the garbage truck. Okay, got him. Diaz's guys actually drop a lot of cash, so make sure you pick that up. Come on, tough guy. I think there was one guy on top of one of these, um, uh, these, like, uh, uh, these kind of lifts here. No, I guess not. In the original, I'm pretty sure I remember that there was a guy on top of one of the lifts. Wow, that's a lot of cash there. Okay, we'll grab that. Oh, you really scary. Careful about the hit lance. Okay, we just get all this cash here. Oh. Still one more. Okay. Yeah, this is what I was worried about. There's a really this is there's a really annoying glitch where this happens where Oh come on, Lance. There goes my careful okay. blown to shit. Thanks to you. You screwed up real good, Lance. You killed my brother. What do you expect me to do? Mow his lawns? We're gonna have to take out that prick Diaz before he takes us out. You okay to use a gun? Sure, I guess. Nice to see you too. Let's get out of here. 
So, um, uh, basically on, um, uh, basically on this part here, there's, there's a, there's a bit of an annoying glitch. And the annoying glitch is where Lance, um, uh, Lance will stand up and he'll still be, um, hurt and sl do slowly dying. Um, and so what you gotta do to fix the glitch is just stand right in front of Lance and don't move, so be really close to him. Now this part gets a little bit annoying. Um, Diaz's guys, yeah. They come in comets, so what I recommend doing is just take this bridge right here. Drive here, and then go here. And I know it's a little bit farther out, but, um, hopefully they they aren't gonna find us over here. Because what's annoying about that mission is that the, um, uh, the, uh, Diaz's guys will just constantly keep ramming you, so they'll catch up to you. They're very fast in those comets, and they will just keep smashing into your car until you blow up. So this way, you know, I know you, you, you gotta take, like, a long turn around, but, um, uh, it is, um, uh, it, it's a safe way to get away. Okay, they don't appear to be chasing us, so I think we're good. Ah. Get patched up. And meet me on the bridge to Star Island, okay? Okay, I got you. <laughs> I always found it weird how he just walks into the hospital with an Uzi and is like, hey, can I get medical treatment? <laughs> I got us some cannons in the trunk. Holy shit, where'd you get all this stuff? You've been saving for a rainy day. <laughs> you like? Yeah, I like. The M4s look really nice in the Definitive Edition. This is so based on Scarface right now. Diaz looks at the camera as he sees Tommy and Lance advancing. Kill Diaz. Don't worry, Tommy. I'll cover you. No need to go for the front, uh, the front. You can just go for the back. That's where you're supposed to go. What the? Okay. I don't know how he survived that. That was weird. I definitely like that on console, you're finally able to fire the M4 in, um, uh, finally able to fire it in third person mode. That's nice. This way. Okay, we're gonna run up a little bit here. I don't want Lance to get shot a bunch right now. I would normally use the Uzi on the, um, when I would play this on console. Because it, just the auto-aim. But now that I got the M4 and I can finally aim it in third person, the M4 you have to hold fire to aim, which is, I guess, a little bit frustrating, but it was like that on PC too. Diaz's house does look really nice. We're gonna take it. Okay, bring the M4 out here. Get rid of these guys on the staircase. Got him. Okay, him. Got him. Diaz, I've come to take over your business. Yeah. I've come to take over your business! Tommy, you betrayed me, you idiot! I'm gonna kill you real soon! Oh, eat this, you murdering bastards! Few of them up here. Oh. 
Oh, careful, Lance is about to die. Got him. This is hilarious. I love this cutscene. Diaz's reaction. You stupid pricks! My beautiful house! Look what you done to it! This is for my brother! I trusted you, Tommy. I trusted you, Tommy. <laughs> I would have had you made. Say goodnight, Mr. Diaz. Diaz is a moron till the end. <laughs> So now Diaz's house is ours. Look at that. We got 50 grand for that mission too. The best paying mission so far. And um, uh, now we're going to be able to start up the um, the protection ring asset missions. Um, so I guess we'll leave it off here. So thank you guys for watching. I hope that you guys enjoyed this part. We got a good step in the story here. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one. Oh, we got a phone call here. Tommy, son. Have I got a surprise for you? I'm down at recording studios with some major artists. Why don't you pass a visit? You know it makes sense, don't ya? See you later. So I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, everyone.